So you want to know the things you need to look out for when playing Wuthering Waves. And this video is just for you. I will be going through the things that I personally think everyone needs to know about when starting this game. On the release of the game, there will be almost 58 resonant beacons. That's what these fast travel points are called. Now this can change in the future whenever they decide to expand on the map and add new areas. But at the moment, that is all of them right now. When finding the resonant beacons, you can either go around the world and look for them yourselves, or you can use the interactive map, which I talked about in a previous video. Make sure to check that out, by the way, if you haven't already. Link will be in the description. Now, in my opinion, I think everyone should be get, trying to get these beacons as quick as possible, as it just makes life so much easier when needing to go from point A to point B. As well as that, you will also be rewarded for every beacon you actually interact with. These are asteroids, which is your premium currency in the game. These will allow you to buy summons to pull on characters you want to get. It will also give you something called union experience, which is what helps you level up your union rank. And the benefit of leveling up your union rank is that you will also be rewarded even more with the Awakening Journey event. In short, it basically gives you free summons, asteroids, and if it's anything like the beta, you'll receive a 5-star weapon selector box. Killing enemies will always drop you shell credits, but you can always have a chance of getting the materials to ascend your characters, level up their skills, or ascend your weapon. Now, does this mean you kill everything in sight? Yes! Well, you can if you want, but it's not really necessary. At some point throughout your journey, you'll meet Yam. This guy is your training instructor, the man who is going to put you through the limits of your training and make you become the almighty Resonator. By the way, if you didn't know, the playable characters that you play as are known as Resonators. When speaking to him, you will be able to enter the simulation training rooms. These will give you a nice reward that will help you level up your characters. It will also give you a hefty amount of union experience, some shell credits, and what seems to be some affection or rank type item. Not sure what it really is exactly. If you guys know, please let me know in the comments below. Now, when it comes to doing things in Wuthering Waves, it's to make sure that you do every single puzzle, title heritage, and open every single chest you see when exploring the world. The reason I say this is because you'll be rewarded for every single one you do, and these are only a one-time thing. You get free asteroids, some experience for your uni rank, high-end materials, and wood grain fragments, which you can exchange this at the shop in Jinzu for various items such as summons, tuners, experience items, and shell credits. During your exploration, you may come across Sonance caskets. These are basically the equivalent to Genshin's Oculus, which you can trade them in Yuzu to a merchant, a relic merchant called Chen Pi. He'll reward you with asteroids, summons, wave bands, or breakthrough materials for your MC. Wave bands are basically this game's versions of constellations or eidolons. Now, the time is for the best part of the game, in my opinion, which is the Echoes. They have a feature in this game called Databank, or what I like to call it personally, Echo Decks. So, what this is, it's a way to track your finding at Echoes that you have acquired or captured while playing the game. By doing this, it will allow Level up your terminal level, which will increase your maximum stamina, your character's stamina by the way, and grants you some asteroid. Rank 4 echoes can be farmed after level 8, and then rank 5 echoes can be farmed after level 15. The last thing I'm going to be going through is the item exchange shop, uh, just the summoning page. I'll be going through other things later on. So you can get radiant tides, which are your premium or event summons, forging tides, which are your weapon summons, lustrous tides, which are your standard summons, residence, potion which is experience for your characters, energy cores, which are your experience for your weapons, sealed tubes, which are your experience for your echoes, LF Whispering Corex, LF Howler Core and Crude Ring. From what I've read up, these are all materials that you need to ascend your characters, their skills or your weapons. You can also get shell credits, which is just the normal in-game currency. When it comes to some of these experience tokens or ascension materials, for me personally, I'll probably use them when I get into a hard situation or a tough situation. Let's say the enemies are taking too long to kill or I feel like I'm slacking in strength for my characters. From what I have seen in the beta you gain character experience every time you finish any sort of mission or quest anyway so I think the leveling experience will be fine without using them as much as you might expect. However it's completely down to you if you use them straight away or you just want to save them for maybe other characters in the future. I'll go into detail more on the other sections like I said in the shop in another video and that's about it. All the things you should be looking out for when playing through your room raves. Hopefully you found this video was helpful to you. If there are any other other things you want me to go through let me know in the comments below i will see what i can do for you thank you guys so much for watching i hope you have a lovely day and i'll see you in the next one